When you start creating more complex objects, you're going to have objects and faces going in all different sorts of directions. And one of the initial challenges you might face is how to work efficiently at all of those different angles. The first helpful concept is that of local space, and you're probably already familiar with this one, but let's review it here just to be sure. So global space is oriented to the world. So you can think of Z as you know, the up and down, the Y as the north and south, and then the X as the east and west. So no matter which way your objects are facing, that's always going to be the same. I can rotate this in any direction. East is always going to be east, north is always going to be north, and up is always going to be up. Except for everybody in Australia, of course, I don't know how they do everything upside down. But if we switch over to local space, of course that's relative to the object and not the world. So that's more like your right or left, your forwards and your backwards. So as long as I rotate my objects in object mode, then it's going to keep that orientation so that I can very easily make tweaks. So if I tab into edit mode here and I have my local orientation set, then I can just move this along its local Z axis and quickly make this handle longer or shorter. It's very easy. That'd be very, very difficult to do if I was using global space because it's going to skew. And, you know, even if I try to get really, really close, I'm always going to be slightly off. So keeping your objects rotated in object mode and keeping their local orientations uh, as much as possible is a really, really helpful thing. That way we can just take all these objects and quickly make the tweaks that we need to without really having to worry about it. If we were to rotate this in edit mode, you can see that that orientation no longer matches up with the geometry and we start to have some problems. So the first thing is just separate out all the objects that need to have different orientations, or that would be helpful if they had different orientations, and rotate them in object mode and don't apply rotations unless you really need to. Now, sometimes that's just not possible though. So let's take this you know, chassis here at the back and I'll hit slash to go into local view. And let's take a look at how I'd want to move uh, this end of the pipe here if I wanted to move it uh, slightly out more or extend it. Well, it doesn't line up with the local view because I joined it with this object whose local orientation is kind of set along this pipe. And since this edge loop doesn't match that, you know, I'd still have to move it, you know, kind of awkwardly like that. So instead I can use the normal orientation, which is the direction that the face is pointing. So if I take one of these faces here, let's go to face select mode, you can see that it's just pointing out uh, from the face or out from the average of the faces. So that's pretty intuitive and I could you know, take this edge loop here and move that along its normal and that works really, really well. But if I take this edge loop, then since it's not connected to any faces on the other side, the vertices don't know exactly which direction to point and so we're left with something that's not quite right either. So we're not able to use any of these orientations to actually move this in the correct direction. And this is where custom orientations really come in handy. So that's where we could take you know, an orientation of one or more of these faces I'll just select this face loop here, and then I can go over to the orientations popover, click the plus button, and I'll call this rear shocks. So then once I have the rear shocks orientation set, I can use this on any other vertices or edges. So then I can use that to just move this right along the correct direction, and I don't have to worry about it being off one bit. So custom orientations are incredibly helpful and something that you can utilize throughout your projects. And as you can see here, uh, I have quite a few set up for all the things that are at awkward angles. For example, this head mount here, this face is at an awkward angle. And if I were to, you know, select some of these edges or select, you know, a group of faces, they might not all align with the correct normal. So I can just set this to top front and I know it's going to be aligned in the correct direction. So that works well, but sometimes it's really helpful to be aligned with something in side view or front view. And that can be very difficult for some of these objects that are rotated on multiple axes. So for this one, it's, you know, not too bad. I can easily add, you know, my loop cuts. I can see this from side view and it's all sort of lined up and clean. And it works, you know, very well to work on this in orthographic mode if I need to. But for some of these other objects that are tilted at more, you know, extreme angles or very different angles, that can be very difficult. So let's say this object here is rotated both along the Z axis and the Y axis and the X axis. And so if I look at this in a uh, side view, it doesn't quite line up. Actually, that's not a good example. It does sort of line up. Uh, let's say we take, let's say we take this object and just rotate it along the Z like that temporarily. I'll kind of screw that up for a second. I'll go into local view. And let's say we look at this from side view and 
you know, we try to edit this, it gets very confusing to see uh, exactly how this is how this is oriented. So we could work on it like this. You know, that's not a, a big issue. We could switch over to either a custom orientation or use our local orientation and make our edits like that. But sometimes it's just very, very helpful to see something dead on so that you can quickly sketch out a shape or use the knife tool and line everything up perfectly uh, with the viewport or do whatever else you need to do. Because for example, the knife tool, if you hit C while making a cut, it'll angle constrain, but it'll only constrain to the viewport angles, uh, not to the local orientation of the object, which is kind of unfortunate. But one thing that you can do is just select a face or a group of faces and just make sure that the one that you want is the active face and hit shift and then use your number pad to go into orthographic view. So in this case, I'll hit shift seven to look at the normal front of this face. And that way it's going to line it up just like that. Or it could go to shift one or shift three. And you can see that'll line it up with my viewport exactly the way that I need it to. And then I can use my knife tool with K hit C and line things up exactly. So that is incredibly useful. And it also works in object mode as well. Uh, this is also helpful for rigging and working with bones and stuff like that too. But we can just take this and since it's local orientation is pointing outwards along the X axis, I can just hit shift seven, look at the local top, shift one to look at the local front or shift three to look at the local side. And by doing this, I can make any edits that I need to from a perspective that's very convenient. And once you get used to these shortcuts, they become very fast to use. So let me undo that really quick and put this guy back. There we go. And the last thing that I want to show you is how to line up two different objects that are at extreme angles. So let's say I want to uh, place another object right here along this handlebar, and I want it to be oriented exactly the same way. Well, if I add is that our trusty test Suzanne, if I add Suzanne here, and I wanted her to be aligned exactly with this handlebar, it would be pretty difficult to kind of rotate this like this, try to go to the front view, kind of rotate it like that. It would take a lot of time and I'd probably not get it right. I have to rotate it along the Z a little bit. It's really hard to tell exactly how this should be rotated. Well, what we can do is actually just take this orientation uh, and as long as it's a saved orientation, we have our handlebar here. Then I can take this monkey then I can take this monkey and go to object, transform, and align to transform orientation, and she's gonna snap right there. So just rotate it a little bit, but that's pretty easy to fix. I just know I need to rotate this 90 degrees along the Y axis, or the local Y axis, and then she's right in place. An alternative to this, if you don't have a custom orientation, is to set your pivot point to be the active element. So let's say we have multiple objects. We could have Suzanne, we could have a cube, and they're all rotated in different ways, but we want to align them here to this front arm, which is pointed in a totally different direction. Well, we can just take these two objects and make sure that this one is the last selected active one and set our pivot point to active element. So now our local axes are going to be snapped to that object, and then we can go to object transform and align to transform orientation. And now both of these objects are going to be aligned exactly as we want them. If you find it easier, you can also use snapping to align your objects. So just go to your snapping options and turn on align rotation to target. Right now it's set to vertex snapping. And so if I hold control and snap, uh, it'll go kind of wild, but we can set this over to face snapping. And I like leaving this off, but just holding control to snap instead. And that way it'll nicely snap to any angle that we hover over. This is a great option for placing screws and bolts and little things like that but I generally don't leave this on most of the time because I like to work with vertex snapping and it can get very confusing very quickly if you're in edit mode and you're trying to snap two vertices together and all of a sudden things just fly off in a different direction because you forgot you had a line rotation to target turned on. So if I do that, I'll generally quickly turn it off after the fact so that I don't get confused. One operator that seems like it would be helpful in this situation but is actually for something different is the align objects command. So if we hit shift A and I'm just gonna add a bunch of cubes here as an example, and let's say I kind of scattered them throughout the scene, then we could select them all and go to object, transform and align objects. But instead of rotation, this is only for location. So this is only for moving the objects into alignment. So we could choose whether we want to align it on the X axis, the Y axis or the Z axis. And so this can be incredibly helpful uh, but only for, again, moving the objects into place and not rotating them. So that would be helpful too, but oh well. Another method that you could use to align objects or move objects along the axes of a surface 
is to use the 3D cursor. And in Blender 2.8 and later, the 3D cursor now has a rotation. And you can find this if you hit N to open up your sidebar and go down to View. And then under 3D cursor, we can change the rotation. And this is useful because we can now orient things to the 3D cursor. So previously we were able to have it as the pivot point, but now we can have it as the orientation as well. So instead of having the uh, pivot point being stuck there, we can have this set to median point, but use the 3D cursor as the orientation. And then as we change the orientation of the 3D cursor, let's go down to view again, change the rotation. You can see we're changing the orientation. So this way you could either add in, you know, any exact orientation that you want just by typing it in here, or you could also just stick this to the surface and have it copy the normals of whatever's underneath. Now, there is a hotkey for adding the 3D cursor anywhere in the scene in any tool, which is incredibly helpful with shift and right click. However, the downside of this is that it always aligns the cursor to the view. So even though it sticks to the surface here, it's not grabbing the normal of the surface. Now this is an option that you can change in the 3D cursor tool. So let's go over to the toolbar and choose cursor. And you can see here I've expanded my tool settings and you can change the orientation. Uh, by default, it is set to view, but you can change it to transform or geometry. Here I'll select geometry. And now if I left click anywhere, you can see that the 3D cursor is now picking up the normal of whatever face it's on top of. So I could just place it on top of here and use that orientation uh, anywhere else on my model. So this is an incredibly quick way to work, but unfortunately this only works with the 3D cursor tool itself. If we're using the selection tool or the move tool or anything else, using shift and right click, we'll always align it to the view and there's nowhere to change that. If that's an option that becomes added in the future, I can definitely see myself using this a lot. But for now, I usually stick with one of the other options just because I don't like changing tools very often. So using those custom transform orientations, those viewport hotkeys, and aligning different objects to those orientations is a really fast way to add details and just navigate your project as you're working. So I hope you found that helpful. I'm Jonathan Lampel with cgcookie.com. And if you're curious about this model, I'll do a video on the modeling of it pretty soon here. But it's an example that I'm making for the fundamentals of texturing course, actually. And part of the course is going to be going through and having students uh, actually texture this themselves. And so by the time you're finished with the course, you should definitely be able to tackle a more complex project like this. So look out for the fundamentals of texturing coming pretty soon. And if you haven't seen the other fundamentals courses, we have modeling, animation, shading, and lighting and quite a few other really comprehensive Blender 2.8, 2.9 courses that I'll link to down below if you're interested. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.